What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan Matthews, back at it again with another hometown take. Today, I'm talking about the Atlanta Falcons, and I talked about an offensive rebuild. Well, now we're going to talk about a defensive rebuild, because even though the team doesn't really want to say this is a rebuild, it's still really a rebuild. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get into it. But before I do that, make sure you guys like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, check out the link down below down below ooh, ooh. to buy me a copy to help fuel this channel help fuel the Atlanta Falcons to a great rest of their offseason and no injuries and whatnot but guys let's go ahead and get right into the video oh yeah turn on your notification bells as well subscribe if you have not that good stuff you know the duck going on but let's get right into the video the Atlanta Falcons I talked about yesterday that they are trying to you know get bigger stronger more physical on the offensive end well, it ain't, it's the same thing for the defensive end, you feel me? It ain't no different on the defensive end. We're trying to get bigger, stronger, more physical, and more nasty on the defensive end, too. And Dean Pees and Terry Fano and Arthur Smith, he's the head coach as well. He covers both sides. They are doing the same thing with the defensive end as well. And I'm liking what they're doing on the defensive end. Just Arthur Smith, Terry Fontenot have really impressed me thus far, especially with this past draft. So... Let's go, talk, let's go ahead and talk about how the Atlanta Falcons are rebuilding their defense to make it bigger, stronger, faster, more physical, and better. So, to recap what the Falcons have done in the offseason for the defense thus far. March 18th, they signed Casey Hayward, cornerback Casey Hayward, to a two-year $11 million deal. 2021-22 stats for Hayward, 17 games. He started all of them guys. For the Las Vegas Raiders, one interception, nine pass deflections, 46 tackles, and a safety too. I see Casey with the safety. So Casey Hayward, we all know he came in, he's coming in to be a veteran presence for AJ Terrell and really a young defense overall. Jalen Hawkins, Richie Grant, all the young guns on the defense. So he'll help as well. We also brought back Aaron here, you know. But I really do like the Casey Hayward signing. He's going to be a good cornerback two option for us. He's going to be a good, you know, reliable corner. He's been very durable throughout his career as well. And I hope to the Lord I just didn't jinx him. Hopefully he stays durable, but he will be a very good cornerback two to AJ's Terrell cornerback one, obviously. So I think he'll be a very good cornerback two option. He should get a lot of looks like I'm not sure people are going to throw AJ Terrell's way anymore. Showing, showing what he did last season and should have been an all pro first team, but <laughs> that's besides the point. So Casey Edwards should get a lot of looks and hopefully, you know, he's still got a little juice left in the tank and I feel like he does, but he might get a lot of balls thrown his way and uh, he might have a lot more chances for interceptions. Like I said, only had one last year with nine pass deflections, but he might get a lot more opportunities to get some turnovers this year because I don't know if anybody wants to go to Terrell Island, you feel me? Because balls that go to Terrell Island, usually get stuck on Terrell Island. I mean, it's stuck in the gloves of A.J. Terrell, hopefully going back the other way for a pick six for the Falcons. But again, Casey Hayward, good experience bet um, to put next to A.J. Terrell. Hopefully he continue to be durable and make some plays for us this year. So that's Casey Hayward. March 22nd, the Falcons signed outside linebacker Lorenzo Carter to a one-year $3.5 million deal. Lorenzo Carter had a very, very good last four games of the season last year with the Giants, 14 games. He started all of them as well. Five sacks, one interception, five pass deflections, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, six tackles for loss, eight QB hits. Now, like I said, a very good last four games of the season. How good were they? Well, he had five sacks on the season. All five of those sacks came in the last four games. He had two versus Dallas, one versus Philly, one versus Chicago, and one versus, versus the Washington then football team, but now Commanders. So five sacks all came in the last four games. Also, he had an interception. Um, that didn't come in the last four games. Five pass deflections. I don't think that came in the last four games. Anywho, oh, I had it here. Here's the stat. I, was, I need to read it down, further down in my paper. Um, four out of the six tackles for losses that he had came in the last four games. Six out of the eight quarterback hits came in the last four games. Four out of his five pass deflections, so yeah, they did. Four out of his five pass deflections came in the last four games, and both forced fumbles came in the last four games. 
You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Basically, all the stats that he had last year came in the last four games. Four out of the six tackles for loss, last four games. Six out of the eight quarterback hits, last four games. Four out of the five pass deflections, last four games. Both forced fumbles, last four games. He balled out in the last four games. Now, the big question surrounding that is, was that a sign of things to come? Has he really started to figure things out in the NFL? This is a Georgia boy. You know, he came out of University of Georgia. Was really good coming out of Georgia. So was that a sign of things to come? Has he figured things out? He's 26, year old, 26 years old. Hopefully he's coming into his prime. The NFL game is slowing down for him. And, and you know, did that show in the last four games? Or was he just like, oh, let me do a little something, something so I can get me a little contract and keep it pushing. So hopefully this is a sign of things to come or those last four games was a sign of things to come for Lorenzo Carter. But time will tell if he's gonna ball out time will tell if Len oh, i can't could make the rhyme lorenzo will ball out there you go anywho hopefully he's gonna ball out with the falcons hopefully he carries that momentum that he had last year with the giants in those last four games over to the falcons for this entire season because P does what the last what he does what he did in these last four games with the Falcons for the entire season. This man will be a pro bowler. Put him on a put him on an all pro team. You feel me? So hopefully he can just be consistent and do what he did in the last four games all season long. And hopefully he just wasn't actually putting in effort in the last four games just to get a contract. So there you go for Lorenzo Carter. Moving on, April sixth. The Falcons signed veteran linebacker Rashawn Evans to a one-year, $1.75 million deal. 2021-2022 stats, 12 games, 11 starts, 57 tackles, two interceptions, three tackles for loss, two pass deflections. Those 57 tackles, 35 of them solo, 22 assisted, one forced fumble and a fumble recovery, zero sacks, but I wouldn't make too much of that. He's more of an inside linebacker, somebody who's going to shoot in between the gaps and make plays hopefully in the backfield. Um, uh, on the, you know, he's, he's the contrast to what Lorenzo Carter is, an outside linebacker, more of a outside linebacker slash pass rusher that's what lorenzo carter is so he's kind of the contrast to that gonna stay inside in between the gaps the a and b gaps so rashawn evans i think dean p's probably handpicked this man out from tennessee because he did spend all all of his career until up until now with the tennessee titans so i think dean p's handpicked him i think he really likes him arthur smith probably really likes him too so that's like hey terry go ahead and get that boy rashawn from tennessee and bring him over here you feel me so i think he'll be a good veteran presence again you know got to get some veterans in here to help teach the youngest because we got a very young team overall offense and defense so we're gonna bring in some veterans like Casey Hayward and Rashawn Evans. And Rashawn Evans can help the development of Jalen Hawkins, who's like in that safety linebacker role. Troy Anderson, obviously. Arnold Ebiketti, D'Angelo Malone, our three defensive draft picks, our three top defensive draft picks. And even 26 year old Lorenzo Carter, you can help him maybe figure things out a little bit when it comes to, you know, being a good linebacker and, you know, just how to make it out here in the NFL and be consistent. So I think he'll be a good veteran presence and not only a good veteran presence, but I think he's gonna help teach this Dean Pease, this extensive long playbook of Dean Pease defense to these young guys and to everybody else. So like I said, he was there when Dean Pease was there. He understands the system. He knows what's going on. That Dean Pease playbook is long, you feel me? So he can help those guys comprehend it understand it and maybe you know put it into terms that dean pease well i'm sure dean pease can put it into terms he's a coach for a reason but still help them comprehend the dean pease defense so i think rashawn evans is going to be a good productive player also a good veteran player who can help teach these young guys what's what help teach this dean pease defense he'll be another coach on the field for this young atlanta falcons team so there are the signings Casey Hayward, Lorenzo Carter, Rashawn Evans, the three main defensive signings for the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously, we drafted Arna Ibikiti, D'Angelo Malone, Troy Anderson. And like I said, guys, I gave you those stats in the full draft recap. You know about them by now. Um, if you want to watch the full draft recap and get more of their stats, more insight on them, you can go watch that. But for the sake of time, I can't go into all of their stats right now. I already did it. Anywho, like the Atlanta Falcons offense, this Atlanta Falcons defense is trying to get bigger, fat, not faster. I mean, they're going to be fast, but anywho, they're trying to get bigger, stronger, more physical, taller. You know what I'm saying? So I like what they're doing with the defense. 
I'm gonna read. I'm gonna compare you what we have on the defense defense now versus what we had on our Super Bowl defense back in 2016 with Dan Quinn. So it's a big contrast. Like I said, taller, stronger, more physical. I think that's what they're trying to do. You know, Dan Quinn, he was more of a you know speed kill, speed over everything. You know, flying to the ball, sideline to sideline. Dean Pease isn't like that. I think he wants more beefier, stronger, more physical dudes on his defense. And I'm with that. I like it. You know what I'm saying? So let me read you this contrast of guys we have now versus guys we had back then. So Lorenzo Carter, 6'5", 225. Rashawn Evans, 6'2", 232. D'Angelo Malone, 6'4", 240. Troy Anderson, 6'4", 235. Arnold Ibikidi, I don't know if it's Ibikidi, Ibikidi, I'll figure it out. Um, 6'3", 256, Casey Hayward, even the even the cornerbacks are bigger. 6'11", uh, for Casey Hayward, 192, and AJ Terrell, 6'1", 195. That's now. Listen to what it was back then in 2016. Deion Jones, 6'1", 227. Leroy Reynolds, 6'1", 240. Sean Weatherspoon. Now, Sean Weatherspoon did play a little bit in 2016. Uh, played four games, started in three. 6'1", 241 was Sean Weatherspoon. Devondre Campbell was him and uh, Brooks Reed were our biggest dudes, height-wise at least. 6'3", 232. Brooks Reed was 6'3", 254. Courtney Upshaw, 6'2", 272. Uh, Philip Wheeler, 6'2", 241. Paul Warlow, 6'2", 230. And I left out Brian Schofield and AJ Hawk because they only played like three games combined. Brian Schofield played two, AJ Hawk only played one. But Schofield, O'Brien Schofield, 6'2", 238. AJ Hawk, 6'1", 240. The tallest guys on our Dan Quinn defense in 2016, 6'3". The shortest guy, on our Dean P's defense now, 6'2", trying to add height, trying to get stronger, trying to get more physical, bigger, stronger, more physical. I like it. I'm with it. You know, the speed thing is great, but we got to get bigger, get beefier, make these tackles. Can't have people, you know, no shade to Deion Jones. We can't have people bouncing off of blockers. Well, I guess Deion Jones is the shortest now because he's at 6'1", and he's still on the team. But you get what I'm saying. We're getting bigger, we're getting stronger, we're getting more physical. We're gonna hit teams in the mouth, be the physical, be the nasty team, and I'm with that. Like I said, they're trying to recreate Tennessee in here, a bigger, better, stronger version of Tennessee on this Atlanta Falcons team, and I'm with it. So let me know what you guys think about the Dean Pease, Arthur Smith rebuild here for the Atlanta Falcons in the comments down below. We beefing up, we getting stronger, we getting more physical, you feel me? I love it. I, you know, you, you gotta be physical, you gotta be nasty, you gotta have some nastiness about you in the NFL. You know, you gotta be halfway crazy. And hopefully we're gonna have a little bit of that here with this Dean Pease defense and this Atlanta Falcons team overall. But guys, let me know how you're feeling in the comments down below. Make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, check out the link down below to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel, help fuel the Atlanta Falcons to a great rest of their off season. The schedule comes out, uh, the schedule already came out. Reaction video actually probably is already up by the time you see this video. Anywho, until I talk to you guys next time, make sure you stay true to Atlanta, believe in Atlanta, go Falcons. Peace.